talk about suicide for a moment, okay? First of all, you're accessing this material and that means that most probably you're not ready to die yet and this is really good, okay? I'll tell you why later. Hmm? Keep on going, it's important. But the fact is that if you want to kill yourself, nobody can stop you, okay? Nobody can monitor you 24-7. This is a very important decision, perhaps the most important decision of your life, of course. But actually, you're on your own on this. And nobody has the right, in my opinion, to tell you what you should do with your life. Of course, I am against suicide myself. I had myself, like many other people that I know, including my clients, uh, very bad times in my life. Okay. Like everyone else, I had the feeling how much easier it would be if everything were to finish right now and I had the power to finish it, you see? And I can tell you today that in my personal case, I didn't do it because of lack of courage. It doesn't really matter why I didn't do it in my personal case, okay? My, my, the, 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 the philosophy that I follow in my life prevent me from doing so anyway okay but we're not going to go there because it's not about me it's about you okay but the point that I want to drive home is that nobody can tell you what to do about your life and about when to end it and this is very important that you know and you are reminded that you have absolute freedom you don't want to be here anymore you can do it and we all know it you see you are free to go if that's what you want Nobody can stop you if you dare to do it, okay? If life has become so unbearable that you can't stand it anymore, then you're free to do it. But, 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 and this is the thing. I'm not going to tell you only, because yes, I am going to tell you, that I believe that life can be beautiful and that is worth, that there are many reasons why it's worth living, at least I believe so, personally, just my opinion, okay? But suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Once I heard that quote and I think that it's very, very good, you see? So that gives you perspective. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Think about that. Okay, you had a long life, or maybe you had a very short one, I don't know. But the thing is that up to this moment, maybe you thought of a, a few times about ending your life, but there were many other moments when you didn't. There were many other moments when you were actually enjoying life, most probably, in most of the cases. Most of my clients that have really terrible lives, I, I could tell you that. I heard some really horrible stories. Life stories that you look at and you think, wow, this is going to be really hard. This person has had such a bad life. I'm surprised even that they're so strong that they're still alive and smart enough to come to therapy for this. You see? But the fact is that nobody can stop you if you want to end it. Okay? But think about it. Most probably something was good about your life at some point. And if it was good, they say in, in my language, which is Spanish, my original language, my mother tongue, they say that hope is the last thing we lose. You see? And it's a nice saying, okay? Because I think it's true. Human beings are designed to be always fighting and always trying, you see? So you don't know if tomorrow you won't feel better. You don't know if tomorrow won't be a better day, a brighter day, you see? Maybe something else is wrong, maybe it's hormonal, maybe it's psychological and, and your subconscious mind is taking care of sorting it out. Maybe your destiny and life will change tomorrow. Who knows? But I can assure you one thing. You will never know it if you end your life today. You will never know if tomorrow will have been a better day because you are not with us anymore. You wouldn't know it if you end it today. So think about that. Think about hope. Think about the best moments that you had in your life. And think about the joy that you had at those times. And think about the
the fact that as long as you are alive, there's a chance that you can leave at least some of the happiness again. You see? And there's a high chance as well that as long as you are alive, because human beings don't need so much in order to feel happy, in order to feel that their life has meaning, think that there may be many sensations going forward that you never felt that will also bring happiness to your life. So if you're going to end your life, it is your choice, but remember these things that I'm saying today. Okay? You don't know what is coming tomorrow. And you may be at a time in your life right now, right here, when you feel that there's no hope, there's no point, that it's better to go. And that's perfectly fine. I understand it. But remember that you don't have proof, and you cannot prove to me or to anyone else that life will always be this bad. So you can go if you want, but at least go honestly. Go knowing that you may be missing out on something cool, something nice, something that will change your life for the better. We don't know. But if you're not here, you won't know. This is like a birthday party that you choose not to go. Well, maybe you thought it was going to be boring. Maybe it is, but maybe it wasn't. But you weren't there. How would you know? Anyway. <laughs> so, suicidal ideation. Okay? If you ever think or you're still thinking about ending your life, helplines can help. There are trained people there on the phone right away that can help you. Okay? Think about it carefully. There are reasons to continue living. Okay? Suicide is not a real solution. This is not a reason and I don't like that way of thinking. You see some people say, oh, I couldn't kill myself because I would hurt too much someone else. I understand and I know that it feels really bad and, and your mother will probably be very, very sorry if you have a good relationship with your mother, um, if you kill yourself and blah, 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 uh, or you have a responsibility to your children. But ultimately, I understand perfectly if you want to end your life because you can't stand it anymore, okay? But if you are watching me right now, most probably you still have hope, okay? So remember my points. You don't have any guarantee that tomorrow won't be a better day, and it well may. So don't take any precipitated, precipitated decisions. Anyway, okay, the world is also a big place, you see, and, and things happen that you never know, yes? So leave your pride behind, become humble, move somewhere else if you have to, start all over, okay? As long as you are healthy somehow. If you have a health problem, maybe there's knowledge, maybe there are new techniques that can help you, okay? But if it's not about a health problem, maybe you can remake your life in some way, be creative, go online, get the information that you need, okay? Be bold, take steps, Go, go to work uh, as a, in, a, in some ship in the middle of the ocean or something. Even if it's something totally different to what you were doing. You see? Become a nun if you're a woman. I don't know. Consider doing something totally different before choosing to go. Just consider it. Just an idea. You see, animals don't kill themselves. They have a simple life very simple genetic and psychological imprinting, which is propagation of the species. They don't have this kind of existential crisis, for what we know, that we humans have. You see, think about that. Think about how interesting is that. You will go to a wolf and say to the wolf, look wolf, I'm thinking about killing myself, what do you think? Is it a good idea? Have you done it? Have you thought about this? And the wolf will look at you like, what is wrong with you, man? Like, Killing myself? I spend most of my time trying to be safe, trying to kill others before they kill me. Why on earth would I want to kill myself? That's totally ridiculous. Are you off your mind? What? These this, this human guys are really, really strange creatures. Okay? Most probably a horse will tell you the same thing, a tiger will tell you the same thing, and a tiny light, little microscopic uh, cell will tell you the same thing, okay? They wouldn't understand a drive to kill yourself, those very deep philosophical questions that you may have. So maybe what you need is a simpler life. Maybe what you need is some perspective. This is not a joke, just think about it, 
okay? Other organisms have much simpler lives. And um, if you think about it, there's a deeper lesson there to learn than just a joke. Okay? Now, the next thing. If you feel down, if you feel depressed, if you are feeling really unhappy in life, the main thing that you have to do is to admit that you are in trouble. Okay? Um, this is online therapy or online course about happiness and depression. Mm -hmm. So nobody knows that you're doing this, but it's very important that you at least you admit it to yourself. You see? So make sure that you understand the problem, that you accept and admit that you have a problem, and then you begin to take the actions that you need in order to resolve that problem. Okay? But if you are in denial, you won't be able to be happy. You see, like I wrote in my Happening of Happiness Life uh, book, sorry, uh, there, is, there are certain things that we must do in order to live a happy and healthy life. Okay? And there are certain things that we must not do to do that. It's not rocket science. Okay? So, what you want to do, the first thing that you want to do is to admit that you're in trouble. The next thing is to take the right actions in the right order in order to get a better life. Okay? So, action is important. But action without the right order of events won't take you anywhere. Okay? So, one, admit that you're in trouble. Two, learn what you need to learn about the problem in order to feel better. The book, The Happening of Happiness, will help you with that because I wrote it thinking about that. Third, yes, order is important. So make a priority, prioritize, priority. Think about the order of the actions that you're going to take in order to live a happier and healthier life. Okay? And four, Put that action plan in motion. Do it. Okay? There you have the solution for procrastination, for action, which is the antidote against anxiety, as I told you earlier. Yes? Admit that you have a problem. Learn about the problem as much as possible. Prioritize the actions that you're going to take. And then execute your plan. Okay? Action is the enemy of anxiety, stress, and procrastination. So, admit that you have a problem, learn as much as you can about the problem, then prioritize your actions and then execute your actions. Okay, let's talk now about your self-image. Hmm? Who are you and how do you get here? The way in which you answer that question, the way in which you answer that question, yeah, will tell you a lot about yourself. It will tell you about how worthy you feel of good things in your life. It will tell you about the importance that you give to yourself, what you feel that you deserve and what you feel that you don't deserve. When you answer that question, who are you and how did you get here? It's a biographical question and it will tell you a lot about who you are. Okay? You should write down a good long paragraph about that. Who are you and how did you get here? You see? And see what you come up with. It's a very powerful question. Now once you've written the answer there, think about what the answer says about you and particularly about your self-image, how you feel about yourself, your self-esteem, how much you are your best friend how much you support yourself, how much you love yourself. You see? Once you think about that, think about who gave you that image of yourself. You see? Who made you feel this way? This is actually the third point. The second point is, what are your goals now? You see? But on the third point is, who are the people that gave you these messages about yourself. Whatever you believe about yourself in the first question, who are you and how do you get here, 
is usually connected to the people on the third question. Who were these people that planted these answers in your mind? What did they tell you about yourself? What did they tell you about your value, particularly when you were growing up? Who were the people around you and what kind of values did they give you, particularly about yourself? How did they make you feel about yourself? Did they make you feel strong, healthy, powerful, confident? Or did they make you feel weak, small, and not worthy of love and attention and, and good things in life in general? Very, very important. Think about that. The second question is, what are your goals now? Why is that the second question? Because it's very strongly connected to the first one. Because you see, if you see yourself as something very, very small, you're going to have very, very small goals. So that's why I put that question there. Who are you and how did you get here? And therefore, what are your goals? That should tell you a lot about yourself, how you view yourself, how much you believe in yourself. And therefore, what are your real chances of achieving happiness and health in life? Now, one of the most powerful things that you can do in order to feel better is to visualize yourself at your very best. So if for whatever reason, then question is one, two and three, the result wasn't very positive, this is one of the first things that I want you to begin to do in order to reinforce your self-esteem, okay, which is Visualize yourself at your very best, in the most vivid way possible, as often as possible. Is that clear? I'll repeat it. Visualize yourself at your very best, in the most vivid way possible, as often as possible. Take note of that, it's important. Because the mind, the subconscious mind particularly, cannot differentiate between something that is lived, imagined, or dreamt. So look at the second one, imagined. So if you imagine something powerfully positive, often enough, right? this is the mind, this is the conscious mind, this is the subconscious mind, okay? The main way to influence the subconscious mind coming from the outside world is through repetition and association. If you repeat something strong enough, either good or bad, through repetition it will go straight in there. It's as if every time that you repeat something, you're giving one little bit of the arrow there. So you repeat it once, it went in a little bit, you repeat it again, it went down deeper, 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 by repetition finally, it is there, at the subconscious level of the mind. So, the more you imagine good positive things happening to you, the more you imagine that you are valuable, strong, powerful, healthy, happy, even if that is not what they made you believe, even if that is not what your current environment is making you believe, the more you will absorb that image of yourself at the subconscious level and the more you will be able to escape that hostile world that is trying to keep you there. And escape that, those hostile individuals, if there are any, that are trying to keep you there. Okay? So, repetition of the visualizations of yourself at your very best will help you to complete these ones and once you've repeated those visualizations enough times it will go straight to your subconscious mind. Once you have reinforced your subconscious mind with a new image of yourself only then you will have the energy and motivation that you need to escape from that little world where people want to keep you caged in. Is that clear? So, you see, for whatever reason there are people in the world that want to keep us down, 
Okay, and it's very, very long and complicated to explain why. There are environments that are not designed to be healthy for humans. In my book, The Happening of Happiness, I mention it. Uh, over 50 pages I talk about how the modern environment in Western cities is not conducive to, help, to health and happiness. You see? But only if you reinforce your self-esteem and visualization, regular visualization of you being at your best and being powerful and strong, only if you do that you will be able to escape from all the negative message units that you are getting against you every day that are keeping the bolts of this cage tightened so that you can't escape. Is as if this new knowledge of yourself will make you liquid so you can escape the cell in between the cell bars. Anyway, before getting too poetic here. So remember, repetition, association, visualization of you at your very best. The more you do it, the better your sense of self-esteem will be regardless of what happened to you in the past. And you definitely want to do that. Let's go with the summary now of the last five slides. Number one, taking responsibility. Okay? Assuming and understanding that it's not your fault, but it's your responsibility to sort this problem out. Number two, getting to know yourself. Okay? and healthy life without it you cannot do it so if you want to be happy this is one of the first things that you want to do because in life and in your personality self-esteem your sense of self-esteem sits at the very core of your personality so if you have a very weak core everything will be very weak but if you have a good strong core Yes, if you are very strong mentally and you believe in yourself, then you will radiate happiness and health in a harmonious way to every cell of your body and also to your environment outside of you. And you will be an unstoppable force of nature for health and happiness of others as well. So. Reinforce your self-esteem, people. Very, very important. Now, let's go to the next point. Soldiering on. Next one. What is depression? Okay, so let's talk about depression itself. What is depression in general? General concept, okay? So depression is a temporary imbalance of feelings in which or at which time reality and our perception of reality is distorted. It doesn't mean that reality changed. It doesn't mean that reality is hell and will always be hell. No, it means that for whatever reason, the balance, our biopsychological and biochemical balance has changed and we are not seeing the world as it is. Okay? We are having a distorted vision of reality. We are seeing the way, the world, in our own personal way. You see, a mountain is a mountain. A mountain is just a mountain. The sea is the sea. Yes? And what makes us feel that the world is against us is our perception of it. The same exact experience, when two different people are exposed to it, we get two different outcomes from them, two different experiences from them. You see, that should make you think about that. That should tell you that reality is what you make of it. And I'm not telling you this is not cheap New Age psychology or anything like that. I'm not telling you you make your own reality, which is true up to a point. And something that Buddhism says, it's, it's a famous saying in Buddhism. 
But I am telling you that things are not as bad as they seem when you are depressed. Okay? Maybe they are. Maybe all the people that are not depressed in the world are living in limbo and they don't really know, they don't really appreciate that things are so really bad, okay? Maybe you're right, but maybe you're wrong. So when you are depressed, the way that I see it is that depression is like putting those things, I don't know the name of those things, putting those things that they put on horses, okay? And on the eyes, and you begin to uh, close gradually. Depression starts to close your perception of reality until finally, this is all you see, which is nothing, darkness, you see? This is what depression does to you. It distorts your vision of reality, like hands gradually closing over your eyes, and then finally you see nothing. And this is something that many people that come out of depression express, you see? So, remember that depression is a distortion of reality. It doesn't mean that reality is so bad and you only see it in that moment. You see? It means that you are interpreting the world in a particular way that is very negative. It doesn't mean that it's your fault and we are here to see that there are many reasons for it and what are the solutions for it, okay, to this problem. But it means that we have to understand that we are overly negative, overly pessimistic when we are depressed. And that even though our state of mind feels so real, it doesn't mean that that is actual objective reality. Now, you see, one way that I like to view depression and that I like to think about depression particularly when we talk about the psychological reasons why you may feel depressed before, is that the subconscious mind is a self-balancing mechanism within the mind, okay? No, this is not a face. I was going to make it a face, but it's not. Uh, but this is the brain, let's say. This is the conscious mind, and within it is the subconscious mind. Okay, the subconscious mind is a self-balancing mechanism and I think that we're going to be explaining a little bit more of this later. Okay, but basically it's a mechanism that is there to bring your mind back to health. It's a safety mechanism to help you not to go insane. When people go insane, in my opinion, it means that their subconscious mind, for whatever reason, was saturated up to a point that it didn't have the capacity or the ability or the time it needed to do its job of bringing you back to a natural baseline state of mind, to the normal mood, okay? Um, this, is, this is the way we put it. This is time, this is your mood, your mental state, how you feel about life, about yourself and about everything else, okay? So, normally you're in an average state and then something really bad happens and you go really down, okay? It can be a breakup, it can be the death of someone that you um, really loved. The other day I was uh, watching videos of Mike Tyson and he used to have uh, this, Mike Tyson is a boxer, very professional, uh, very, very powerful, one of the most famous boxers of um, the 90s, I think it was and he was extremely uh, good at his job but the thing is that he was molded into being so good by a mentor that was called Costomano I think or something like that and, um, and this man died when um, Mike Tyson was quite young still when he was starting to take off like a rocket because he was so good in his, in his profession and um, Mike Tyson's life from that moment on changed a lot and it clearly he went down and because he went down we could talk about this uh, and about celebrities in all the videos uh, but uh, because you can see